All right, what is going on world? I am back with Ben Switzer here for to continue on the neurohacking experiments. We are now, I believe this is the fifth assessment. We skipped the fourth assessment with uh, showing you guys, but in the fourth assessment, it's basically uh, keeping everything going as it is with the meditations, with the dual end back training, but he introduced Mind Palace to me. So I've been experimenting with it for the last week. He's gonna kind of run through what Mind Palace is, how I've been implementing it, some issues that I experienced with it, and today we actually, uh, he, he really showed me how to take advantage of it. And we're gonna show you guys a little experiment that we did here, and we're gonna see if I can, if I was able to retain the information we did about two to three hours ago. So I think we covered that pretty much. You wanna just jump right into Mind Palace, or? Yeah, so Mind Palace is a, <clears throat> it's a really cool technique that's used for uh, memorizing information particularly good for memorizing information that doesn't really have a great context. So it's uh, ideal for students that are trying to remember, uh, you know, let's say you're biochemistry or uh, you're like a law student trying to remember statutes of, of like civil law. Um, it, it actually originates from ancient Greece. It's a technique, um, you know, that comes from a time when the memory was really looked at something that you know, was supposed to be refined a lot, and you know that continued through to the Renaissance. And you know, with the advent of of technology and writing and things like that, you know, the the necessity to memorize information kind of became less. And so, most of the methodologies used in school uh, revolve around rote memorization. Rote memorization is essentially just repeating stuff over and over again. Um, that's mostly what you're taught as a kid. Uh, in fact, it it's a far inferior way to memorize information, especially arbitrary information. So how the technique works is you create an imaginary space in your mind. Uh, typically, this is a repre representation of uh, somewhere that you know very well, uh, like your home or your apartment or the street on which you live. And then you place information within that environment that is represented by images. Those images are typically uh, representations of information that has gone through several forms of transformation. So one of the things you do is you take the info and you summarize it, let's say, uh, and then you chunk it, you put in little chunks of three, and then you create the, these visualizations of the info, and then you kind of move through time and space in that spatial environment, almost like you're, you're telling a story, or you're viewing a story. And that allows you to remember information better. Uh, and that's in part because the human brain wants to remember information in its context because, you know, uh, the evolution of our brain is as a result of trying to acquire resources in the environment. And oftentimes that means we need to remember where those resources are and navigating by landmarks. Um, so if you want to remember where a berry bush is, it's a, it's a sequence of, of steps and landmarks to get to the reward of the information that really matters to the brain. So part of how, why this works so well is you're hacking how the brain interprets meaning uh, by placing information in the context of time and space. Uh, so that's a really fast explanation of the overarching concept. And maybe we can just get right into um, seeing how it went for you. Mm -hmm, definitely. So <clears throat> I thought it was very interesting when he first started explaining this to me because it really ties into our hunter and gatherer, you know, way back in those days. And, you know, tying it to that berry bush, it really makes sense that there's all these kind of, like when you see that rock and you see this other bush along that path, um, those key markers evoke like an emotional response in you or you tie a, a certain response to it that makes you really uh, remember that path. So I thought it was very interesting and one thing that um, I remember learning from the past and I think this is why I've, I learned this in psychology class but why we have like seven digits for our phone numbers is because that seven is like kind of the max our brain can uh, hold for like short term memory. So what we did here and we're going to cover this in a little bit is uh, we're actually trying to memorize and hold 12 pieces of information. So if you can get to that seven, eight, nine, ten mark like you're doing like this is greatly enhancing what you can hold in your head. So personally for myself, uh, what he got me to start doing last week was trying to uh, memorize the digits of pi. So I tried to create this mind palace for myself, but I find I'm not very, um, I'm not very a visual person. I can't imagine something in my head. So I told him, you know, it took me a couple days to figure out what kind of 
what room, what house, what environment am I going to be using as my palace? And so that was the first couple days being like, okay, like, you know, this didn't work out the best for me, so what am I gonna use? And then I also found a struggle with, uh, a little bit of a struggle with the number aspect of it, trying to tie meaning to all these little chunks that we were breaking down pi into these little three chunks. And then this, uh, so as of today, he actually, um, pulled up 12 random uh, words with a random word num uh, creator and did it for himself and showed me how he created his own mind palace. And I thought it was fascinating. And um, then I, he, we did a random one for me. He kind of went away for five minutes. I made my own palace. And then almost immediately we tested it. And I pretty much remembered the whole thing. So since then, it's been about two hours now because Ben had a, a meeting here at a Innovation Works, and now we're gonna see if I manage to retain it. And it, it all has to do with kind of tying in certain pictures and visuals that have to go with it. And mm -hmm. and it's not just standard things like oh, in my palace, I'm putting a coffee cup. It's like I'm putting a dancing pop tart. That's you know, <laughs> like literally things that when you you kind of go in there it, like it has to stand out and that there's a forced connection between each one of these chunks and I think that's what my struggle was I was trying to make it too logical for myself I was trying to make each step along the thing very I can't even really describe it but I think it wasn't it didn't have that emotional connection to it where it was like aha and uh, I think you really helped me with that today yeah and that's why you know usually when I teach this it takes sometimes three or four sessions to really nail it down and there's variations in people's strengths in, in using this, sometimes creativity, sometimes they're not particularly a visual learner. Um, but once they start exercising that muscle, their ability grows quite significantly. And um, you know, it's interesting, this is how originally epic stories like the Odyssey and the Iliad of Homer were uh, encoded into memories through this, uh, this sequence of very striking imagery that they would pass along. They were actually using Mind Palace technique. Really? Yes. Interesting. So you actually showed me some, uh, he gave me a, a bunch of videos and stuff to watch to enhance and see how other people are doing. So we'll keep that in the uh, description box below if you guys want to go check it out. But some of the one guy you were showing me, like he can memorize like, crazy long poems he memorized the hundred la like the first hundred digits of pi and it's it's crazy how much information you can retain with this whereas mm -hmm. if you're just trying to do the typical memorizing like you might get up to seven to ten things that you can memorize and then after a couple weeks if you're not keeping on it you might forget it but with this it's 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 like a memory in your head so i think yeah. it's amazing and i would encourage you if you're really curious about this to check out a book called moonwalking with einstein the author's name is Joshua Foer, uh, and his story is really interesting. He's a science journalist, and he was curious to understand better uh, the phenomena of these memory champions. There are people that were competing on an international level, you know, memorizing just, I mean, just insane stuff, like memorizing like five or ten decks of cards in sequence and then having to repeat them. Um, and he wanted to better understand how that works. and what he discovered was really interesting. Uh, he discovered that these people weren't like high functioning uh, savants, let's say, you know, with, with a unique brain structure. Uh, they were people that had actually trained using these techniques for, for years. And then, you know, this, this is what makes him uh, truly a badass, as he went and trained himself using the techniques he learned, went back to the memory championship next year and won. Dang. Pretty incredible after only a year. You know, I think the, the record holder for Pi using this technique memorized uh, like 200,000 digits. Oh my god! And so the more you practice, <laughs> okay, so there are two things that happen. The more you practice, you can memorize faster and you can memorize more. So really, it, it is like working out a muscle. And the cool thing about it too is you have to be quite creative. Mm -hmm. So when you use it, you're exercising multiple systems in the brain that are really valuable. Um, so it's something that I recommend for people, you know, not only if you're trying to like, you know, ace the LSATs or the MCATs, uh, but if you're just trying to, you know, write short stories, or if you're like a cinematographer, like anything that requires you to be creative, uh, it's a good way to stretch that muscle and, and push yourself. I definitely see what he means about that creative side, because you're tying these things together that, again, for myself, when I was trying to be too logical about it, you have to take a, a different side of looking at it to kind of make fun of it in a way that is something that is going to stick with you. Yeah. So I can right. see how that can carry over.
All right, with that being said, you wanna see if you can remember your mind palette? Sure. So we'll put it up on the screen here, like what my picture is, but if you can kind of tell, I think it's on the back page. I don't wanna look at it, but okay. we, he, we did the random uh, word creator and there was 12 words. And it's not just remembering the words, but kind of remembering the order that they're in as well too. So uh, the first thing I put in inside the palace was uh, a Pop-Tart. And it's a human pop tart, like it's got arms and legs, and I named him Mr. Tendy. And he's he's saying, you can do it! So he's like being encouraging. And then the next thing I drew was like a door that had like a, a lock on it, and like two, thing, two things growing out of the ground. And um, from that it led to, I think you can just see circles there, but those are supposed to represent grapes. And the, because there's so many grapes, like it's kind of like political, and they're they're talking to the next thing, which is a jacked mushroom who has a whole <laughs> bunch of weights around him. So to tie this all together, so you guys can kind of see what how I logically put this together, the words are okay. So because of the pop tart, it's tart, encourage, and tendency. So if you can see, so I'll just go through all the words. So tart. Um, Tart encourage tendency, then it is. See, this is where I find there's a little gap, but I, once I do have it memorized. So, um, what's the next thing? It's the door with. So the next is sprout. Wait, no, I'm forgetting it now. Sprout. Oh, sprout parallel lock. Then it's fruit government. Vague, and then optimal, mushy, and collect. Is that right? Almost perfect. Almost perfect. Just oh, the order of up? order of one was one off. Which one? So it was um, parallel sprout oh, lock. Parallel sprout lock. Yeah. So one of the ways that you address that, and that happens all the time in this exercise, especially when you're taking so you're taking three pieces of information that are pretty generally unrelated, like parallel sprout and lock, and you're combining them into one. Um, one memory object, they often get mixed. So the way that you address that is by going forwards through your mind palace and then going backwards. So you go both directions, you really try to solidify the order of, of the objects and you test yourself. Um, and it takes practice. And once you do this a, a lot of times, uh, your, your error uh, rate will start to drop. It just takes that, that commitment. But that's really good. I mean, you know, you did this, you, how many times did you practice it? The, well, I think I told you I finally got it written out and then you sat down so I was literally I went through it once or twice like straight I don't even think I went backwards through it. So mm -hmm. I think like it just goes to show like two hours ago we picked all these these words and They're just random and now I can retain all of them 15 different things yeah. Or 12 different things, sorry. Yeah, so the dig if the digit span is seven then you've effectively increased by about 50%. That's crazy. Um, retention. Um, it takes some time to get creative and, and do this, but the time cost is actually less than if you use a rote memorization or like making cue cards and flashcards. Um, so it's a, it's a superior method. And once you get really, really good, you can memorize. You know, I have students that are, you know, they're like 14, 13 years old. They can do 50 digits of pi, pure <laughs> randomness, uh, in about. 20 minutes. Wow. Perfect recall forward and backwards. Um, that one often drops um, the parents' jaws <laughs> when they do that. It's one of my favorite moments <laughs> in the program, actually. Um, so, you know, and as you're going through this process, you're you're going to find yourself being a little frustrated sometimes. You're going to get the answers wrong. Totally normal. You should expect that. Um, you just have to push through it and continue to expand how many words you can memorize in a sequence. Like I was explaining to Peter. That, you know, we have these these memory objects that contain three things. And it's like, so you have three objects that contain three things. So you kind of focus on that that sequence of three, and you really like think about it. But then, as you get better, you can do four, and then five, and then you get better at creating strings of of information with that practice. And would you say like the dual end back training has led to this? Has enhanced this? Um, I, I don't, I can't say with certainty. 
I, I can say that the dual NBAC, part of what it does is it's about encoding visual information in your short-term memory, whereas the Mind Palace is encoding the information in visual memory, like a more long-term. Um, so it's like episodic memory. Okay. I think that in terms of visual processing, you might have an improvement in your <coughs> ability to uh, imagine objects, but uh, I'm just not certain, so I can't say that that's the case. But the two, like synergistic, synergistically, is probably better than than just one. Yeah, most likely, um, because you know the dual end back. What it's doing is it's encoding information in short-term visual memory. So your ability to create a longer string of of loci is, is probably superior. But I don't. I haven't seen any studies or like scientific evidence yeah. of that. Like that's very exotic. Two things to be combining. Um, so I, I can't make that claim, honestly. Uh, but that would be a really cool thing to study, so maybe we'll do that um, in a controlled study in the future. Awesome. Well, I think this is uh, absolutely in amazing. It's very interesting that I was able to, you know, keep these 12 different words in my head, and it's not something that I've been sitting here trying to study and keep, like, sit here and keep focusing on. It's just, we drew this thing out, and we tried it once or twice, and then came back a couple hours later, and I was able to retain all of the words and almost keep it in the order that it was. So I think there's definitely um, precedent, pres, uh, precedent, definitely uh, precedent. Yes, precedent. I can't speak today. So I definitely think there's precedence to this. It's definitely something that uh, if you want to try to get yourself on this cognitive enhancement program for yourself, it's definitely something you should try and experiment with. Now I I did struggle with the numbers because I felt. I had to take a couple steps, but with this, with the words and being able to tie them right to visuals, I think that worked very well for me and I'm very excited to start tying this into Hungarian and starting to learn Hungarian now. Yeah, I think um, for next week, I'm, I'm probably going to expect for you to, to triple this number. I think that you can accomplish that uh, pretty well. Okay. And uh, we'll go, and if you have any trouble, then we'll just work through it. You know, that's, that's part of this process. Um, here's your coach. And I, I think that's they're really the advantage of having someone um, who understands the technique around. Because anyone can learn this, honestly. If you if you really put your mind to it, that's how I initially learned it. Um, you know, I used it initially to memorize the periodic, periodic table of elements and all the atomic weights of each uh, element, um, just for shits, because uh, it was just really fun. Um, <laughs> a huge nerd. But uh, so go ahead and, and give it a try. And you know what, if you're having any trouble, Drop something in the comments section and uh, I'm happy to give you a suggestion to see if I can help you out. Yeah, we love feedback. So if you have any kind of feedback for us, we'd really appreciate it. Go throw in the comments section below. Anything else you uh, want to leave with them? No, just uh, happy neural hacking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have a great day. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Go leave us a comment. Make sure you go hit that like button and we'll see you in the next video.